This is part 19 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to pass basic authentication credentials to the ASP.NET Web API service using jQuery AJAX. At the moment, when we issue an AJAX request from our employees.html page, we don't get any data. And if we inspect this in Fiddler, we get 401 unauthorized. This is basically because the Web API service expects basic authentication credentials which we have not supplied. So here is what we want to achieve. We want to include two text boxes for username and password on our HTML page and depending on the credentials provided the Web API service should authenticate and return the correct results. For example if we use female username and password the service should return only female employees and if we use male username and password it should return only male employees on the other hand if we supply a username and password that does not exist the server should deny access and return 401 unauthorized so let's see how to achieve this let's flip to visual studio now in our employees.html page let's include two text boxes to capture username and password so the text here is username let's include a text box input type equals text ID equals txt username let's include another text box for capturing password so the text here is password and the ID of the password text box is txt password let's also include two HTML break elements and let's change the text on this button get all employees to authenticate and get employees and when we click this button authenticate and get employees the first thing that we want to do is retrieve the username and password from the respective text boxes so let's create a variable username equals let's use the jQuery ID selector and find the username text box using its ID and on this let's call the jQuery val function to retrieve the value from the text box let's do the same thing for password so the password text box ID is txt password so we have username and password in these two variables now when we issue the Ajax request we also need to specify the authorization header so let's include a section for headers and the name of the header is authorization remember the value for the authorization header should start with the string basic and then to that we will have to append base64 encoded colon separated username and password we have username in this variable username and to that let's append colon and to that we will have to append password which is present in this password variable now we need to encode this string to base64 to do that we are going to use b2oa function so this function converts the specified string to base64 so we have our authorization header and if you look at what's happening within our success function we are simply displaying the full name now in addition to full name let's also display gender so we know whether we are retrieving male or female employees so to the full name I am also going to append a bracket and within that let's display gender to get the gender let's use the gender property on the val object and then let's close the bracket and we are closing the list item let's also specify complete callback function so this function will be called whenever the Ajax request completes this is also called when the request completes successfully now we don't want to do anything special when the request completes successfully because when the request completes successfully it's going to retrieve the employees and it's going to display them within the unordered list but when it fails with status code 401 that's when we want to display this text 401 unauthorized in red color so we are using this function for displaying that error message so this function is going to have a parameter and that is going to be jQuery XML HTTP request object 
Now we are going to use that object jQuery XML HTTP request object and then check the status. So if the status is 401 that means the request is unauthorized so if the request is unauthorized this is the message that we want to display 401 unauthorized so first of all we want to empty out whatever we have in the unordered list so let's use the empty function and to the unordered list let's append a list item so unordered list employees dot append so we want to append a list item and within the list item we want to display the status which is 401 and the status code so let's separate them with a colon and then the status text so let's use the jQuery XML HTTP request object again and then use this status text property and then we also need to close the list item all right so let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's go ahead and reload our page. Let's specify a username and password that does not exist. Look at the password in the password text box. It's in clear text. And when we click this button, the error message is also not in red color. So let's fix those two issues. Now we don't want the password to be in clear text. So let's set the type of the text box to password and let's change the color of the list item here so let's set the style attribute and set color to red let's save our changes reload our page one more time now let's provide a username and password that does not exist and when we click this button notice we get the error message in red color as expected now let's specify a username and password that exists in the database so we have specified male username and password we get male employees if we use female as the username and female as the password we only get female employees this employees.html page is present in employee service project which also contains our ASP.NET web API service so in this case the Ajax request is being issued from the same domain so the question here is if a request is issued from a cross domain, will there be any change in the way we send this authorization header? The answer is no. Whether we issue the Ajax request from the same domain or from a cross domain, the way we send the authorization header remains the same. Let's actually prove this. In one of our previous videos in this series, we have created this client application project. Within this project, we have got this HTML page one dot HTML. And from here, we are issuing a cross-domain Ajax request. What I'm going to do here is copy the HTML and the jQuery code that we have in our employees.html page and paste it within our HTML page one dot HTML. The only change that is required on this page is to the URL of the Web API service. Since the Web API service is present in a different domain, we have to specify the complete URL. So the Web API service is present at this port number 23258. So instead of using a relative URL, let's use the complete URL. So that's the only change that is required. Now let's view this HTML page in the browser. So now we are viewing HTML page one dot HTML. If we specify an invalid username and password, we get 401 unauthorized as expected. And if we specify a username and password that exists in the users table, we get the data as expected. Here is the HTML and jQuery code that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.